Good morning. This is On the Porch. I'm Jane Garibay, representative for the 60th District. And we are here today with Bonnie Waterhouse, who is the president and co-founder of Connecticut Voices Against Lyme Disease. Welcome, Bonnie. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. So happy to have you. And it just seems so appropriate with the tick season beginning. Yeah. I really wanted to get out some information um, to the public. So tell me a little bit about Voices Against Lyme Disease. Sure. Well, we've actually been in existence five and a half years. Um, we are all very passionate about getting awareness and education out to everyone. Our organization is all volunteer. There are no paid employees whatsoever. Um, when we go to some of the conferences where we're getting a lot of the new information from researchers and doctors and so forth, we even pay for those which are out of state. Um, the passion is there for all of us because 90% of the people that are part of our organization actually have Lyme disease or have a friend or family member that have Lyme disease. So they understand the consequences if it's not treated in time. So um, that's key for us. Um, the reason why I started this program is I have a son that's had Lyme disease for 29 years. How many um, years? 29. Wow. 29 years, it took the doctors two and a half years to figure out what he had. And because of that, um, he is still not well. Uh, he got it as a teenager, which kind of tells you how old I am. <laughs> I don't like to mention that. Um, but yeah, so he actually can no longer work. Um, it, he was a supervisor in a mental health clinic. Um, but because of the issues that you have, not only the muscle aches and so forth, but you also have neurological issues um, and um, some issues with memory, uh, thinking of all the words you're trying to say. When you're working with patients, you can't do that. Right. So he actually, it's been four years now, he hasn't been able to work. Uh, so you're, he's managing his symptoms. He can't be cured. Correct. When you have, whether you use the term chronic Lyme or late stage Lyme, that's exactly what you do. You're just uh -huh. doing what you can to maintain now, there are times when he's very bad, that he literally cannot get off the, of the bed or off the couch. So when it gets real, real bad, and a good example of this right now is um, he has um, IVIG, which is really taking the gamma globulin and the antibodies, basically, um, through an IV to help his immune system. And here again, right now, that's so much more important because when you have COVID-19 and you know you are aware that anybody with an underlying condition, their system, their immune can't handle it. And right. that's, that's a key issue. So I was glad um, that he was able to get the IVID again. Um, he's been pretty much in quarantine for four months with his family. Mm -hmm. um, the IVIG does give him the ability, he's got a little bit more strength, so he's trying to do things outside, which normally he, he can't. But summer is always better for people with chronic Lyme because of the, the muscle aches and uh, you know the arthritic type um, issues around it. Um, What's important that I think everyone should realize, and actually uh, this morning I was over at, um, and did the STEP program. And for those of you that don't know what the STEP program is, it's hopefully I can say this, figure this out. Um, it's actually, um, uh, yeah, Summer Team Employment Program from Windsor. They do this every year. They have us come in every year and actually do a program to help the kids to understand because a lot of their work is outside for the town. Right. Um, this year they're actually doing Millbrook. Um, so it was very important that I get there. And to be honest with you, this is the first program that I've been able to do in five months. We normally do programs from February through the end of November. Um, and this is the first one. Come, uh, by the second week of February, they started canceling them. Right. Well, I know before I met you, I thought, well, you get Lyme disease, they put you on antibiotics and you're cured. Um, again, that was before I met you and understood more about Lyme disease. So what other facts can you tell us for the average person? You know, first of all, how do we take care of ourselves so we don't get it? 
Mm -hmm. And what do we do when we do get it? It's not usually as simple as just, you know, a week full of amoxicillin. Right, right. And usually um, what happens is there, there's this whole controversy around chronic Lyme. You still get many, I'll call them old fashioned doctors that believe there's no such thing as chronic Lyme. You also get, what happens is people that um, get bit by a tick, there are, there's only about 30 to 35% of the time that you ever see the tick or even get the rash. Most people think of Lyme disease, oh, you're gonna get that, um, that target or that uh, bullseye on your skin. Right. Only 35% of the people ever, ever get it. And when you ask people that have had Lyme disease, did you see the tick? Did you find the tick? You get 60 to 70% that basically say they never saw the tick. Never saw the tick, never saw the rash. Um, when you ask them, do you remember where you might have gotten bit? Because, you know, often people will say, it's only when I go walking in the woods am I ever going right. to get it. 70% um, of them are basically saying it's in your own yard. Okay. And the reason for that, the whole um, situation as far as that's concerned, there's always been the talk that it is a deer tick, a black legged tick. It's a deer tick. And when people hear that, they think, well, I can only get Lyme disease if I'm in the woods and there are deer there so the ticks drop off. That is no longer the case. The biggest carriers right now, if you were to look out your front door, you're gonna find chipmunks. Mm -hmm. And chipmunks are one of the biggest carriers right now. And they have been for a number of years. So and they're take, huge right now. I mean, we've had so many chipmunks. We do too. I, I have chipmunks. Um, I don't have any field mice, but field mice are another big um, uh, tick carrier. Um, I have little rabbits running around and the rabbits carry it because what you have to think of, it's all the small animals that are on the ground that are the biggest carriers. And you could take the researchers and scientists will take a look at some of the chipmunks that they've observed. There are three, 400 ticks around their neck and their head and their body. Wow. So, you know, that's how we get them. And the way that happens is the black-legged tick actually, when it drops off of its latest host or going to look for a host, it hangs out on a blade of grass. That's what it does. So if you're in your front yard and you haven't mowed your lawn, because it's that's been why they tell you mow your grass, right? You have to mow your lawn. It has to be short. And I know a lot of us don't believe, well, you don't want it too short in the summer. It's going to burn. If you want to make sure you don't get the ticks, you have to have it short because that tick, the back legs of it, and remember, this is an arachnid. Okay. It's from the arachnid spider family. It has eight legs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. I know. And, and that step program that I just did this morning, I brought my huge poster of, of ticks and spiders. And even putting it in my car, the poster, I get hives thinking about it. But in any <laughs> event, um, it is from the arachnid family. And it hangs on its back two legs. And it sits there and it waits for its next host. Okay? Um, and that could be a mouse. It could be a chipmunk. It could be a squirrel. It could be a rabbit. It could be a bird. That's the key. Because what happens, so many people will say, again, I don't go in the woods. I don't have a big lawn. Actually, I live in the city, so I can't get bit by a tick. Well, what happens is those birds that are now carrying those ticks will go into Hartford or wherever, New Haven, um, kind of start walking maybe on a park, in a park, drops the tick, okay? Now you're sitting in the grass, and guess what's gonna happen, or could happen. So that's part of the, the awareness piece. The prevention piece is huge. The prevention piece, you can literally, yeah, you might get bit by a tick, but, but if you do everything you need to do, then you're going to be fine. And when I say that is you need to wear repellents, whether it's on your skin or whether it's on um, your clothing. And you need different. What kind of repellent? Just regular off? Um, you can use off. The thing with off is it usually has, it always has deep in it. Okay? Right. We're not crazy about that. And the reason why I say that is because it is strong. Okay. And it's, 
we're not, you really should, it doesn't really work well for your clothes. It works more for your skin. Do I want to put DEET on my skin? I, you know, it's not really. Well, that's why I asked because I don't like using the DEET either yeah. unless I absolutely have to. Right. So there is something called Picardin, which is made from a flower. It's P-I-C-A-R-I-D-I-N. You can use that on your clothes or you can use it on your skin. And it does come from a flower and it works very well. And there are different brands. Pardon? Where do you get it? Um, you can often get those at L.L. Bean, um, Cabela's. I've been told you can get it in like a Walmart, possibly. You can get it online. Online. Yeah. Now, the one that's the best for your clothing, truly, is anything that's, that's got permethrin in it. And permethrin is P-E-R-M-E-T-H-R-I-N. <laughs> permethrin was developed for the Defense, Department of Defense, because so many of our young um, folks that have gone out um, as far as training, um, they're coming back from the woods and they, were, uh, they ended up with Lyme disease. So the Department of Defense decided they were gonna actually pay to have the research done. Close to $4 million later, um, they came up with this permethrin. And this permethrin is by far the best one that is chemically based. Okay, um, it works on clothing. You can buy clothing. You could buy clothing at Cabela's, LLB, online. It already is treated with permethrin. So that's key. That's one of, that's, we call that our best, that's your best bet. And I think that's what we used when we traveled to India. Yeah. Spray the clothes and let it stay. And it actually survives washes. 70, well, if you get clothing already with it in it, treated with it, it's 70 washings. If you okay. spray it, it will, um, I think it's nine, eight or nine washings you can get. Okay. So very, very good. Now, if you don't want to use a chemical, then what we suggest, there's two, there's a number of options, but there's lemon and eucalyptus that you can use. Um, there is something called cedar side, which you can't really buy in the store. You have to order it online. And basically what it is, is it's cedar. Ticks do not like cedar, which is another reason why we tell people, if you put cedar chips from the woods area of your yard in a, a little ways, make a border, you're less likely, you'll certainly get fewer ticks coming across that border because they don't like cedar. So those are the two biggest ones that we suggest that you could possibly use. And by far the most important thing is when you come in the house, we call it a tick check, tick check, tick check. That's right. it. And that's checking every warm place in, on your body, um, including your hair. Hair is a, uh, is a big issue. Around your neck, under your arms. I know it's gross. <laughs> I can't see this, we're all going to go take another shower. I know. I, 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 just I, every time I come in, that's exactly what I do. But yeah. you also have to remember about, about your dog because the dog also can easily get bit by a tick. Now, the nice thing is dogs, dogs can have vaccines. They also have pills or collars you can put on them. Right. We don't have those options. We don't have a vaccine. We could try the collar, but I don't think yeah. so. You know? <laughs> but um, the, have the you big ever heard of, um, what is it, mint? Um, mint planting it in your garden helps with ticks. Yeah, my son has made sure that, you know, um, like Shannon will put it in or, or whatever. And they right. do put the, the, the mint. That's, okay. There are different things you can use. I mean, even right. if you plant it, maybe like the eucalyptus, you can, you know, it might help. Right. Oh. Um, but that's, that's very key. Please check your dogs and especially check in their ears, between their ears, their toes, their paws come yeah. huge with it. Okay. Um, one of the things you want to make sure if you have a possum in your yard, don't get rid of it. Don't kill it. Don't put it in a cage and, and bring it somewhere else. That is the bigger, biggest eater of ticks by far. Thousands of ticks in a season. So keep them there. Um, if you see a snake, don't kill the snake. Now, two issues with the snake. The reason why I tell you not to kill them is because, of course, they eat the voles. They eat the chipmunks and the mice. Yeah. But they now have 
hundreds of ticks on them. And I've seen the pictures of it. You turn the tick over or look on their head and you could see the ticks have already engorged in the snakes. So just be aware of that. You know, if you pick up a snake to get rid of it, make sure that tick doesn't transfer itself to you. Right. Um, certainly take the tick off as quickly as you can. Do not just take the back of the tick. You need right. to put the scooper or the tweezers under the head. We often hear people say, well, you know, I, I tried the soap and I turned it halfway around and, and turned it the other way around. Well, that's all well and good and maybe it eventually takes the tick off. But believe it or not, you're literally aggravating the tick to the point where that bacteria is going to still go in because it's in their saliva glands. So right. as long as the head is they in. They kind of like throw it up or something into your skin, right? That's exactly yeah. what they do. Do you save the tick after you take it off for your doctor or Absolutely. For somebody? Absolutely. If you have the tick, you found the tick, definitely do that. I suggest though that you, if you put it in a plastic bag, baggie, not just zip up the bag, put tape on the bag. We do soda bottles, empty soda bottle. Yep, that's good. Um, you might want to put some alcohol in it or, or take a piece of cloth, small piece of cloth, spray it with the permethrin, put it inside there with it. Okay. Because, because Windsor in many towns in Connecticut, you can bring it to the health department okay. and they will bring it to um, the department of, um, yeah, um, Connecticut um, environmental, not, I can't even think of it now. Um, Deep? Connecticut, um, CAES which is the Connecticut Agricultural Experiment Station. I'm yes. getting old. Yeah. No, that's not getting old. We just have so much on our minds that sometimes. So they will bring it there, okay? And they don't want you to squish it or anything because it, they really need to look at the whole tick. Um, if it is not a black legged tick or a lone star tick, if, it's, if they figure out it's a dog tick, they're not gonna even test it because you don't need to test right. it. But definitely, if it is... And that would be good news, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. And they will tell you. Now, the other good thing is because there, there's a lot of controversy with our, with our doctors. The doctor is going to say, did you have a bullseye? No, I didn't have a bullseye. Do, do you have the tick? No, I don't have the tick. Well, then you probably don't have Lyme disease. Tests are only 40 to 45% accurate. Many times it's a false negative, um, especially if the doctor does get you tested within a few days of when you think you got bit, because it takes 20 days for the antibodies in your body to start fighting. And that's, that's what right. this particular test does. It looks at your antibodies. Sounds like COVID-19, I know. Um, it sounds a lot like the virus, actually. I was just... Well, and, and to be honest with you, I had that in my notes because part of what I did with the step group this morning with the kids is many are the same symptoms. Symptoms like fever, chills, cough, shortness of breath, fatigue, muscle body ache, headache, sore throat, nausea. The, so it, similar. So... It, you know, if the COVID test comes back negative, that's awesome, okay? If it comes back negative, it's absolutely awesome. Right. But if the doctor says, you don't have that uh, for kids, you have growing pains or, you know, you, it's all in your head, which we often hear, mm -hmm. um, you need to make them sure, make sure they take a, uh, a Lyme test because of the possibility it could be one or the other. It is so important. Because COVID-19, you know. Um, it's better safe than sorry. That's right. And, and, you know, they can take care of the COVID-19. What they can't do is if they misdiagnose Lyme, you're going to have it for the rest of your life. Life. Because, you know, it's there. Um, the, other, the only other thing I want to mention about the ticks in general, if you find a tick that has a white spot on it, that is an extremely um, aggressive tick yeah. here in Connecticut. Um, it actually came up from the Southwest in probably the last five years. It's huge here. That is called the Lone Star Tick. 
And the difference between the Lone Star Tick and the Black-Legged Tick is Black-Legged Tick, as I said, sits on the blade of grass and waits. The Lone Star Tick senses or gets your aroma or your CO2 and it will walk to you, literally walk to you. It doesn't wait for you to, hit, to cross it in the, in the path. So that's huge. That's a big, big difference. And people have said they've seen them. They literally come to them. The other thing about the, the Lone Star Tick is many people that have gotten bit and didn't know they got bit by a Lone Star Tick have ended up in the emergency room of the hospital uh -huh. because they literally, they didn't know they got bit by a tick and maybe they're going to have a hamburger or any red meat and all of a sudden they get an anaphylactic shock. Literally, they immediately have to go to the emergency room. They can't breathe. They might have eyes. Um, very, very difficult and very scary. Um, so that's very important. If you have that tick, you see the tick, you knew it was engorged, then you have to get to a doctor and you have to get the medicine that you need for it. Right. Um, so that that's so just key. take the precautions that you're saying. I know I'm going out and mowing my lawn this afternoon. Not that it's that long, but it is. You say, well, we can't cut it too short. You right. Know, but with the little dachshunds running around, I really don't want them. Yeah. yeah. And, and what, what we're telling people, especially like today when I did the kids, one of the things you have to do, the best way, if you could only do one particular thing, okay, um, as far as protection, protect yourself from your shoes up to your mid calf. Okay. And the way I explained it is that's the reason because those, those regular ticks, the black legged ticks are in the grass. They are going to climb up either from your shoes or onto your socks or onto your pants. So spray those areas. Mm -hmm. If you're not wearing jeans and you're wearing shorts, spray your skin up to your calf. Because you're going to be able to get a lot of stuff. The other thing is, always have a lint brush with you. Okay? Because what you can do is you can take that lint brush when you're done outside. Probably hasn't been too long. So now you take the lint brush and brush your, your legs, uh, brush your jeans, all of those things. And you're going to pull off those ticks because they have not had a long period of time to engorge. So well, that's... that's that's awesome information and it makes it very clear and for people to understand that it is a serious why do dogs have a vaccination but people don't um i guess i shouldn't say i guess we did have a vaccine about 18 years ago 18 to 20 years ago um you couldn't have Lyme to take the vaccine okay okay um but and it was a three-prong vaccine you had to have three different shots now, when we've spoken with a number of people, they were able to go through the first two, and many never got the third. And those that even got the two have never had Lyme disease, ever. But right. during that time period, there were two issues with the pharmaceutical companies, okay? One of them tended to be, they were saying not enough people understood Lyme disease and didn't think it was necessary to get a vaccine. So they, the money wasn't there based on the research they did. The other thing, uh, which seems even more plausible, uh, what happened is some people will get sort of like, again, COVID-19 that don't know they have it, they're asymptomatic, okay? You can get Lyme disease, and if you have a strong immune system, then um, you don't realize you have Lyme disease or it's dormant in your body. They were given the vaccine and they got a huge reaction to the vaccine. And because of that, they said, oh no, we're not taking this. It gave us Lyme disease. When in reality, the researchers and doctors basically said, the Lyme literate doctors basically said, it was dormant in your body. So they have been working on it. That. Yeah, that would yeah, be great. I mean, they are working. I'm short. I want to thank you for coming on the porch. Um, I learned something new every time I talk to you. And I hope people watch this and, you know, take it. It's not to be afraid or not to go out. It's just Correct. take the precautions. Take the precautions, build up your immune system, eat what you should be, getting the sleep, getting the exercise. Please come out and, and, and see us. Um, we certainly... Um, What's your website, Bonnie? Pardon? What's your website? 
um, is, well, the best way to go in is just V-A-L-D um, C-T dot uh, at, no, wait a minute, let me try that again, yeah. V-A-L-D C-T um, dot org. Okay, that's our website. We have a Facebook, Voices Against Lyme Disease, uh, CT, um, and you'll be able to pull us in that way. Um, we certainly are, um, would love to have people volunteer. We, you know, we certainly would love right. to have that. Um, contributions are very helpful right now because the money is so short for, for every um, small. Right, and you project. cover the whole state, not just Windsor. So right. I know you travel all over doing these educational programs, we which do. is awesome. And we've gone into the schools, and that's what I want to continue. We right. can only do that with, with funding. Um, and, and the kids are very receptive, you know, lots of good questions. And for me, it's all about, I need to get the kids to understand because they'll go home and they'll tell their parents. I've right. So many parents say that to me afterwards, and that's going to keep them from getting Lyme in 20 years of chronic. Well, thank you so much, Bonnie. Thank you everyone for listening today um, on the porch. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye.